Okay, weekend waffle time. So I was trying to think of a topic to waffle on about for 10-20 minutes this weekend because it's been a while since I did a talking and I really wanted to do one. And I thought, well, instead of talking for a bit, I'll describe something that I've been doing recently and it's not the Dreamcast stuff. And it's this. So this is the PC Engine Core Graphics 1 that I picked up in January. And I've had to do various things to get it to a stage that I'm generally happy with the way it works. And I bought the machine as as is. It is you know, a little machine, it's just like the PC Engine but grey. And it didn't come with any cables. And the difference here, the main difference between the PC Engine and the Core Graphics is this, which is the AV Out. The other difference that you might find between like, like a, a UK or well, UK import American machine, the Turbo Graphics, apart from it being longer, is that it has a different joypad socket. And these two cables have been a real challenge and it's been months of, well, on and off when I got around to doing it is just trying to do some soldering jobs and get some cables and whatnot. So what I thought I'd do this week is just describe what I've done and some of the problems that I've had along the way. So if anyone else is in a similar situation where they've bought one of these machines cheap off eBay without any cables, then hopefully they can do the same thing and, and avoid some of the problems and a lot of the costs that you can get for trying to reacquire these cables. Okay, so the first thing to show here is the Mega Drive. And this might sound like a slightly weird thing to be showing at the moment, but the reason I'm looking at this is because it has a lot of the same outputs as the PC Engine, or rather the outputs and inputs as well. And I'll just turn this off and show you what we've got. Because the Mega Drive has got your standard Mega Drive joypad port. So this is your Atari style one. This is no good because the PC Engine has its own. But fortunately, I unhook these. On the back you've got your Mega Drive power and you've got your AV out. Now the power is exactly the same so this is great. So if you've got a Mega Drive you've already got the power adapter. If you have a Mega Drive AV SCART lead then if it's the non-RGB one so the composite one then you're halfway there but there are some problems, so let's just hook this up. Okay, so we've got the PC Engine here, so what we can do is just plug the power in, take the Mega Drive AV out, it's quite strange that this is on the side, but there you go, plug that in, and plug in the joypad. Now, the thing with the joypad is, and I didn't realise this until I bought the machine, the pad that I've got is from the Turbo Graphics, and this is your American style one, but it has a, a full size DIN connector, which is no good because the PC Engine, the Japanese one, uses the small mini DIN, so that's no good. And I tried looking around on eBay, but I just couldn't find a Japanese pad, so I built myself an adapter. So this is fairly bad soldering, but it, it does work just from buying some bits for Maplin and converting the DIN to the mini DIN so I got some soldering instructions and wiring instructions on online and, and that seemed to do the job. Okay so let's power this on. All seems to be working fine. So the video is okay but there's no sound and this was a real problem so when I bought the machine I was worried that this was a faulty unit and there was no sound and I opened it up and I checked the capacitors and everything seems to be okay none were bubbling or anything like that and I know there are problems with the Turbo Duo but I wasn't aware for anything similar with with this machine so by chance I just tried turning the volume up and if you turn it up to full Apart from the buzz you can hear a little bit of noise and the reason for this 
if I just turn this off, is that the Mega Drive isn't wired up exactly the same as the PC Engine, or the Core Graphics rather. So on the left you've got your audio, well your mono left channel. On the right you've got your video out. So if we take this cable, so this is a mono cable. So you've got your this pin here, the mono out, the right pin is video out, the bottom is ground, and that's all you need for this. But there's an extra pin, and this is different from the Mega Drive. So this one here is 5 volts, but that's not used for anything. Here is your right channel, but on the Mega Drive this is wired differently. This is your green output, so if you're using RGB. So if you've got a mono lead, it'll work with the Mega Drive and it'll work with the PC Engine. And I thought that will work perfectly fine, but as you can see, the sound output's really quiet. So I thought, that just seems really weird, and I thought, I'll give it a chance, maybe it's some quirk with the unit, that unless it's connected in stereo, it comes out really quiet. So I built one of these, which is a, a stereo cable. So this was just a cable that I had already, and I just cut it in half, and rewired this, so you've got your left channel, 5 volt, which doesn't connect to anything, ground, which connects to these three, your right channel, which is this one, and your video, which is this. So let's try it. Okay, and turn it on. So you can hear the audio straight away. which is a, a big difference. So I'm not sure why it does that. So with the Mega Drive, if you connect it in mono, then you get full sound output, so you get full volume. But with the PC Engine, the Turbo Graf uh, Core Graphics rather, it seems unless you connect it in stereo, you get this really quiet, kind of muffly, buzzy sound that comes out of the machine. And I'm really not sure why. And I thought I'd check it through a pair of headphones and the left channel's coming out perfectly fine as well, so it's not like there's a faulty left channel. Which is really weird, so it seems you've got to have both channels connected for a, a decent sound output, so I'm not sure if anyone else has had the same problem. So, my advice would be if you've bought one of these machines and you're after some cables, then for power, you can just use your Mega Drive 1 power cable. Um, for the video output, I would certainly recommend buying not a Mega Drive mono cable, but see if you can get a PC Engine, um, either Turbo Duo or Core Graphics um, stereo cable, rather than the mono, or you can just build one yourself. So I built some just some bits from Maplin, so it's just a case of soldering it. So if you're up to the job, then that'll take you not, not too long. But the thing that really caught me out, and I wasn't aware of it, was was this. So in order to use a Turbo Graphics pad, you've got to rewire it. I'm not sure if you can use a Mega Drive one. That might be an interesting thing to do, but I've not seen any guides on how to do that. So hopefully this has been useful to anyone that's in the same situation. Either they've got a machine that doesn't have any cables, or the cables are broken, and they're just wondering what to do. So I think the 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 rule of the you know the experience is your Mega Drive one power cable works perfectly fine. Use a stereo core graphics or turbo duo video audio cable and don't use an American turbo graphics pad unless you've got an adapter or you've built one yourself. But once you've got those three working it works perfectly fine. I suppose the other thing to keep in mind is the Japanese cartridges are not compatible with the American machine unless you've got an adapter and vice versa because the the pins are reversed or scrambled some some different configuration anyway and if you've got the Japanese one you can't use an adapter as far as I know I think there's a lockout chip in there so hopefully this has been useful to anyone who's thinking about buying one of these machines and are not sure about whether they want to spend um, you know, less money on getting a machine without any cables and, and whether it's economic to do that. So I think in total it's probably cost me about 10 quid for all the different adapters 
um, and the plugs and the sockets and things like that. I, I already had the soldering iron, so it, it didn't really cost anything from that perspective. It's just £10 for all the bits from Maplin. It sounds like I'm advertising them, but I think that's the only place in the UK that really sells this. Right, I hope that's been useful. Thanks for watching.